According to the Holy Science by Sri Yukteswar, history moves in great cycles. These cycles correspond to the precession of the equinox, which the ancients called the Great Year. Within this 24,000 year cycle, we are currently at the transition point from the Iron Age or the Kali Yuga back to the Bronze Age or the Dwapara Yuga. I'll make another video about this turning of the age soon if there's enough interest, but I don't have time to go into all the details here. Ultimately, I believe that this great turning of the age that we are experiencing now, from iron to bronze, will reflect what happened 3,500 years ago at the end of the Bronze Age, just at a higher octave. During the end of the Bronze Age, about 1600 BC to 1000 BC, nomadic horse warriors swept down from the Eurasian steppe in waves and conquered new lands. They set up aristocracies over largely agrarian peoples and founded city-states in Europe, across the Mediterranean, and into India. These once nomadic tribes created an entirely new social paradigm and planted seeds of empires that would come to rule for thousands of years. And this was right at the beginning of the Iron Age. History works in cycles, but according to the Vedic philosophy, the yugas reflect each other, spiraling upwards. To put it really simply, the Bronze Age had a bunch of decentralized tribes and city-states. The Iron Age saw the greatest centralization of power the world has ever seen, especially in something like a one world government, which many people are pushing for. In order to return to a Bronze Age and avoid this dystopia, we need to return back to decentralization again. And I believe that this decentralization movement will be led by the nomads of the new era. Now, I'm no oracle or fortune teller. These are just my ideas as an educated student here. I have no idea what the future will look like, but the general themes I paint are not just plausible, they are likely to me. Because for many people out there, especially the restless and brave ones, this is the only hopeful path left to them. Most people sense something is wrong. They feel numb. They feel frustrated and sick. The greatest and most capable of the younger generations find themselves retreating or silently rebelling against all of modernity. I know I and most of my friends are fed up with the backwardsness of the modern world. All the things that make us uniquely human, like having a connection with nature, having a connection with one another, and having a cause that we believe in have all gone away. While big banking, big tech, big government, big pharma sees greater and greater control over an atomized people. And when capable men and women fully awaken to the fuckery of the modern dystopia, they will turn their backs and look elsewhere. They will look to the frontier. In fact, millions of them already are. The best among the new generations become entrepreneurs or nomads, trying to pave a new way for themselves and a tribe. They are the self-sovereign creators, founders, entrepreneurs, and digital nomads, and there are millions of them spread out globally, and their numbers are only going to increase. This new direction towards decentralized communities is not a want for most people I talk to. It's a need. People need to have community. They need shared purpose. They need to feel like they have a stake in this world in order to feel like they are a part of something bigger. Without love, without belonging, without human excellence and camaraderie, and without higher meaning, what's the point of all this? What's the point of life? This is the question I just can't get past anymore. And people who have a higher taste for life feel this pain of modernity most keenly. Hence, they will be the leaders of something new. There's a massive movement today of solo entrepreneurs and digital nomads. And I find many of these to be reflections of the nomadic horse warriors of the steppe. These ancient wanderers prized self-sufficiency, prowess, courage, and loyalty to one another. They fought for freedom and honor above all else. I'd say that they are far mightier than most digital entrepreneurs today, but they still shared a similar spirit. What made the horse warriors of the past so special? What allowed these small bands of warriors to conquer the entire known world over a thousand years and establish themselves as rulers all the way from India to the UK? To answer that question, I'll start with a Nietzsche quote. 
Let us admit to ourselves unflinchingly how every higher culture on earth has hitherto begun. Men of still natural nature, barbarians in every fearful sense of the word, men of prey, still in possession of an unbroken spirit and lust for power, they threw themselves upon a weaker, more civilized, old, mellow culture. Nietzsche reveals a truth in his dramatic and extravagant way is pastoralist peoples tend to be hardier folk because they eat meat, they travel a lot, they endure the hardships of nature. And when they come upon an old, a mellow, a corrupted society that is an agriculturalist one, they tend to set themselves up as the aristocratic rulers. This has happened in China. This happened in India. This happened in Greece. This happened all over Europe. I think this says something about nomadism more than anything else. You see, people who go on their own adventure have a higher thirst for life, but they also tend to be healthier. The pastoralists of the past, the horse and cattle people, often fasted. They lived hardier lives. They traveled long distances and had to survive and thrive through the elements. Hence, they became more warlike. They became more vital. And Nietzsche believed that our actions and our philosophy and our morality is a direct consequence of the vitality of our biology. You see, when you have more physical strength and energy, you want to go discharge that strength. You want to go discharge that energy into open spaces to master. The monkeys seek to master the canopies. The mouse seeks to master the undergrowth. And humans will seek to master the space around them, whether that is an intellectual space a science or art frontier, whether that is a physical space, like we can think of Magellan sailing through all of the oceans. What would motivate a man to do such a thing, to sacrifice his life and the life of everyone else around him? It was this expression of vitality, this thirst for the mastery of open spaces. And the thing about open space is that open space is full of danger. It is full of adversity. It is full of the unknown. Hence, it is where masculinity is born and where masculinity thrives. Just think, if you put a band of men, of just strangers, into the wilderness, what would happen? They would become a band of brothers very quickly in their quest to to master the space around them, to accumulate resources and create a safe haven where women can come, right? So men band together into hunting bands or war bands or adventure parties when they go into the dangers of open space. This is why masculinity flourished in places like the Wild West, this crazy, dangerous, unregulated space that attracted a lot of men and gold miners and people who wanted an adventure. Masculinity thrived in ancient Germanic tribes all across Europe. Masculinity thrived in the Roman Empire where they were constantly expanding their borders. Masculinity thrived in ancient in Athens after they defeated defeated the Persians and created this navy that swept across the Mediterranean. The expansion of space leads to an explosion in culture and also it leads to the hardiest type of human being. And this is why I think the nomads of today are not only healthier than other people, they have a better shot at creating these decentralized and retribalized communities. I know in my experience, I never went to college I don't have a normal job. I've traveled a lot in my life and I'm very ambitious in like building big things creatively online with brothers. And all of that has been tremendously hard. Most people just have a job that they kind of been given after college. They eat the same food every day. They do the same things every day. They live a very soft and comfortable and settled lifestyle. As a result, they become weaker almost in every way. While those who are nomadic, who are starting businesses, who are traveling a lot, who are always having to go into new environments, face the unknown, find friends, build community, find success on the internet, find success in their business or in their project, 
All of these people are becoming stronger and more vital every day. They have all of this new frontier around them. And wherever there's a frontier, men become stronger. Women become stronger. And on top of that, they band together. They create decentralized tribes automatically because the tribal unit is the unit that is required to go and master open space. And the mastery of open space, according to Nietzsche and according to BAP, is the deepest driving impulse within the human being is and within all of nature animals seek to master open space and so do humans and if you want to thrive in your life it's about finding an open space that you can go master this is one of the most important lessons and things i've learned and wanted to share in this video So perhaps our paradigm will soon be ruled by these nomads who are a reflection of the ancient nomads, but of a different sort. And they will conquer in a new way. You see, you can't conquer Wyoming with guns. Our technology today is too powerful. The militaries are too powerful. But you could buy land or buy an island and seed it with the most upright and powerful leaders you know and slowly expand your dominance and influence, partnering with other decentralized communities who are doing the same thing. The Mennonites are an example of people already doing this. They have a whole bunch of decentralized communities spread across America and Latin America and they're thriving, they're growing, and they have their own set of values and rules and laws and culture that is completely separate from modernity. Now, the thing is, is once you try to do this model of decentralization and retribalization in a new way that is not going backwards like the Mennonites, but actually going forwards, you're going to become the enemy to the rest of the world. The globalists have a history of wiping out people who oppose their great centralization of money, power, and food. Basically, the leviathan of big banking and the military industrial complex and big food and big pharma doesn't like anybody exiting their global control and slave state. They hate decentralization because it leads to people and tribes who are sovereign and not easily ruled. Military protection and tech is a question for another video, and I frankly have no idea what's going to happen in the future, but guerrilla warfare has been remarkably successful in the past. Small tribes of ancient German barbarians sacked the Roman Empire like six times. Hell, even the Taliban basically defeated America in Afghanistan. As long as there's many decentralized communities with wise leaders trying to go in a different direction, I think there will be success and we'll figure out the problems along the way. Many digital nomads, influencers, and YouTubers are already fighting in a guerrilla warfare style against modernity. They're making content like this, or they're setting up off-grid communities, or they're starting decentralized business. The problem is, is right now, so many of them are working on solo missions. Things will change drastically once visionaries figure out how to mobilize all of these highly capable men who are drifting through modernity towards an inspiring cause. Once leaders can actually band together, this is where actual breakaway civilizations and movements will occur. My theory is that these new brotherhoods, like the ancient brotherhoods, will start as nomadic, as digital nomads, as they search out for their tribe and their space to master. Then they will set up small breakaway societies across the world. These decentralized hubs of rapid advancement and high quality people will slowly gain power and influence. This is already happening in many places like Guatemala, Portugal, Bali, and digital nomad hubs across the world. Slowly, they will become more and more independent from big states and yet more interconnected to each other. The only way these breakaway societies will flourish is not through conquest, but through business, which is the modern equivalent to warfare, men banding together to compete and acquire resources and also spread a message into the rest of the world. They won't be conquering people directly, not yet anyway. You see, these tribes won't have to. The Leviathan, or the huge military industrial complexes and empires across the world, are about to enter into extreme turbulence over the next century. It's inevitable at this point. You can see my video on Peter Turchin and the rise of the next Julius Caesar here. But essentially, super complex systems of global shipping and global trade where your pears are grown in Argentina and packaged in Thailand and shipped to California, these types of 
justice systems easily crumble, and all indicators point to a high political and economic instability in the coming years. Once mighty states begin to deteriorate and fall, people will look to any organized force that is independent with power and strong leadership. Always in disasters, warlords have risen to power. These are the gangs of the modern East, the revolutionary political parties of Western history, and the tyrants and despots who seized power in the aftermath of every empire. Hopefully, when chaos brews, these decentralized and strong communities can be a shining symbol of a new way, or at the least, a haven for higher men and women. And this all comes down to whether they are run by wise and virile leaders which I think they will, since they attract the best sort of men and women. I don't think America or the Leviathan will vanish anytime soon. It will politically transform in the next century, as will the rest of the global powers, and in that there will be a new opening for a new type of state. And since the fabric of society is so hopelessly broken right now, the decentralized, retribalized state is the only solution, and this is my prediction. Hopefully, we end up with tons of retribalized communities, each building their way towards a true ideal of some kind, experimenting with different economic, social, and political policies, and learning rapidly from the past and each other in the larger network of tribes. You see, we no longer have to rely on Plato's Republic or Karl Marx's vision of utopia. All these utopian theories of the past can simply be tried out. What model of state, of society, of spirituality and religion, of economics works the best for people? And I bet it changes based off your geography and ethnicity. And this is my dream. Instead of a couple hundred great nation states, we have thousands and thousands of city states. And honestly, I think people are way more happy when living in a tribe that's less than 100,000. That way you feel like you have much more influence and self-governance. That way you actually feel like you have a stake in your community and that you're kindred with your brothers and sisters around you. And in my mind, this is destined to occur in some fashion. Though I'm probably way off on the series of events and outcomes, the principle is solid. Nomadic brotherhoods are what have always reshaped the world during eras of great change. And the city-state or the village is the most natural model for living that humans have adapted to. So the question is, is would you rather live in a dystopic one-world government where all social bonds and unique culture have been wiped away? Or will you help pave a new path, one that radically affirms our humanity while embracing new technologies to help usher in a new era? Hey, thanks for watching Wisdom Warriors. If you are a leader, an entrepreneur, a man on a mission out there, I am gathering the troops right now. There's a link in the description to talk to me one-on-one -on -one and join our men's academy. It's a place to build proximity with other guys like you and we're running masterminds every single week. So if that's a place that you'd like to be, click the link below to talk to me. If that's not for you, you can click here for an action-packed recommended video, probably about retribalization. Peace.